if someone dies with COVID-19, we are counting that as a COVID-19 death. No, I can't imagine if someone comes in with coronavirus, goes to an ICU, and they have an underlying heart condition and they die, they're going to say cause of death, heart attack. <laughs> I, I cannot see that that happening. That uh, was from yesterday's White House briefing, and it sparked a nationwide debate over how we count deaths from COVID-19. Do we count someone who tests positive for the virus but died of pneumonia as a COVID death? But what about someone who dies with symptoms of the disease but was actually never tested? It's actually crucial information. COVID death stats inform the models that guide federal and state governments' responses to the crisis. It's really important. Now, Italy, very interesting, has been grappling with the same debate for weeks. I mentioned it two weeks ago. I'll mention it again. Here's what the Daily Telegraph reported. According to Professor Walter Ricciardi, is the scientific advisor to Italy's Minister of Health, this is what he said. He said, the way in which we code deaths in our country is very generous in the sense that all people who die in hospitals with the coronavirus are deemed to be dying of the coronavirus. On reevaluation by the National Institute of Health, only 12% of death certificates have shown a direct causality from coronavirus, while 88% of patients who have died have at least one pre-morbidity. Many had two or three. My next guest is a doctor and state senator in Minnesota who is deeply troubled by the CDC's latest guidance for counting COVID deaths. Dr. Scott Jensen joins me now. Uh, doctor, I want to read for our viewers what the CDC says in part about how to count COVID deaths r relating to that last issue we just raised. In cases where a definite diagnosis of COVID cannot be made, but is suspected or likely, like the circumstances are compelling with a reasonable degree of certainty, it is acceptable to report COVID-19 on a death certificate as probable or presumed. So doctor, what's the problem with that? Well, in short, it's ridiculous. I spent some time earlier today just going through the CDC's manual on how to complete death certificates and part the parts that were specifically written for physicians. And in that manual, it talks of precision and specificity, and that's what we were trained with. The determination of the cause of death is a big deal. It has impact on estate planning. It has impact on future generations. And the idea that we're going to allow people to massage and sort of game the numbers is a real issue because we're going to undermine the trust. And right now, as we see politicians doing things that aren't necessarily motivated on fact and science, the public's going to, their trust in politicians is already wearing thin. And doctor, in that same CDC guidance sheet on COVID-19, it references the fact that basically this is a judgment call for doctors on how to fit, you know, I read it, how to, what goes on line one and then what goes on line two and what goes on the final line as far as contributory, uh, contributing factors and, and ultimate cause of death. But they concede that it is a judgment call. It, again, why is that not correct? Well, let's just take influenza. If I have a patient died uh, a month ago, had fever, cough, and a diet after three days and maybe have been an elderly, fragile individual, and there happened to be an influenza epidemic around our community, I wouldn't put influenza on the death certificate. I've never been encouraged to do so. I would put probably uh, respiratory arrest would be the top line and the underlying cause of disease would be pneumonia. And in the contributing factors, I might well put emphysema or congestive heart failure. But I would never put influenza down as, as the underlying cause of death. And yet that's what we're being asked to do here. Dr. Fauci was asked about the COVID death count today. Here's what he said in part. What do you say to those folks who are, who are making the claim without really any evidence that these deaths are being padded, that the number of COVID-19 deaths are being padded? You will always have conspiracy theories when you have uh, very challenging public health crises. They are nothing but distractions. Conspiracy theories, doctor? So you're engaging in conspiracy theories. What do you say to Dr. Fauci tonight? Well, I would remind him that anytime healthcare intersects with dollars, it gets awkward. Right now, Medicare has determined that if you have a COVID-19 admission to the hospital, you'll get paid $13,000. If that COVID-19 patient goes on a ventilator, you get $39,000, three times as much. 
Nobody can tell me after 35 years in the world of medicine that sometimes those kinds of things impact on what we do. Some physicians really have a bent towards public health and they will put down influenza or whatever because that's their preference. I try to stay very specific, very precise. If I know I've got pneumonia, that's what's going on, the, the death certificate. I'm not going to add stuff just because it's convenient. I think that it's not and a it's conspiracy theory at all. Uh, this so is you you, reje you reject what he said? Absolutely. Well, it's interesting that in Italy, where it's socialized medicine, I guess they don't have an interest in the, the money, uh, if that's what it is here. And they just went back and they started reclassifying deaths, according to their, their top scientific advisor. So they admitted that they were being liberal or generous in how they coded some of these deaths. And, and they're just going back and reclassifying them. Does that surprise you? It really does. I mean, let's just take someone getting hit by a bus and they, they collapse along and they go into the emergency room and they're there for 15, 20 minutes. Blood work comes back. COVID test comes back positive and they die 20 minutes later because of their collapsed lung. We're going to put that down as COVID-19. That doesn't make any sense. Dr. Jensen, really important conversation. We really, really appreciate your data driven perspective. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you.